American. First two-lane player to total at least 1,000 yards in three consecutive seasons. Played five years in the NFL with the New York Giants. And, of course, he's a member of the All-State Sugar Bowl Athletics Hall of Fame. And, of course, the Tulane Hall of Fame as well. Works with Tulane on ticketing and seating for their athletic events. And, of course, the Green Wave just defeated Louisiana Tech 24-15 to move to 2-1 and one on the season. And they play at Syracuse. Good morning start at about 11.30 a.m. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Bobby Duhon of Tulane University. Bobby. Never fails. I always follow LSU when I go to I go places. Been losing to them all my life. Um, for you older folks here, you might remember this. Probably won't, but I was saying this morning, 47 years ago, I was invited to come to the quarterback club luncheon uh, with Coach Jim Pittman. Remember him? Coach, I said, Coach, I don't. Ha what do we have to do? He said, Well, just wear a suit, and we'll go out there, and I'll I'll protect you. I don't have a suit, Coach. He said, Well, go buy one. I said. I can't afford to buy a suit. I was from Abbeville. We didn't have any money. I, I didn't even have a sport coat. He said, go to D.H. Holmes and buy one. I said, Coach, I, I don't have any money. Now, in today's day, don't worry about that. So, go buy it. They'll, they'll charge you a whole suit. I went out and bought a suit for six months, and I paid for it. And uh, it was this luncheon that I came to. I was scared to death and didn't know why I was here, but he made me feel at home, and, and so did you folks. So here we are 47 years later. And I'm back again, representing the school that I went to. And I'm very proud of it. Good thing happening in Tulane is we have a notice here. I haven't been keeping up with the progress of the stadium. Um, but every week that I come back, I see progress being made with the owners of the stadium. Big uh, cranes there, put it up, and they steel workers are out there pounding the, the screws in, in um, the steel, and the stadium is taking shape. It's starting to be something that Dan Dubinsky and I can look forward to, to see because we played in the old stadium. Most of you guys are old enough to remember the old Tulane Stadium. Uh, again, we got beat pretty good by LSU there uh, one year. Uh, but at that time, Dan remembers this, we played in front of the largest nighttime crowd in CAA history. Remember? Largest night uh, it was a good game. We got beat, but it was a, it was a record which held for about 10 years until the stadium, and they put in 100,000 people. But, but it was great fun to have the campus on uh, the stadium on campus. Uh, people complain about where you're going to park. Well, it's going to be a much smaller stadium. There'll be plenty of park uh, to enjoy the festivities. Uh, and to bring the Tulane out of the Superdome, which to me is, was always a tough place to play. Uh, even if you have 25,000, 30,000 for the game, it still looks cavernous and empty. So they're going back home. Uh, the stadium's going up. Thank God we have a pretty good program going now. Curtis Johnson doing a wonderful job recruiting the work with coaches here in New Orleans. He's from New Orleans. He's bringing in some of the New Orleans talent, which is, which is vast. Uh, competing with the bigger schools, but there's something they can offer to these kids. Some of the better recruits in New Orleans. So we, we look forward to the future. Four to seven, and I said to someone, "I am. When was the last time Tulane beat somebody 34 to seven? I have to go back to Eddie Price era, you know, the early 50s. But uh, it's a great time for us to play. I, you know, why is Nick here? But Nick was at Washington and went to junior college, and he wasn't going to play. So he looked for another place, came out here, and was well received by the Tulane uh, staff. And uh, he's a good addition. Joe has three years' experience under his belt. Uh, he'll, he'll do well for the team. He knows how to read defenses, what have you. The two guys to watch, and I think Coach here knows uh, Tanner Lee, the kid from Jesuit, he'll be a, he'll be a, real, a real deal. He's 6'4", 220, and he's going to play next year and the year after. And uh, so they've got a lot of young kids coming in in the system. Uh, they're working hard. They've got a uh, fairly, I look at the schedule, it's not a very impressive schedule. Uh, we tried to get Kent State on the schedule, Coach, but we couldn't. They wouldn't let us play them. <coughs> uh, we, uh, we have a, not a very impressive schedule, but it's a, it's a building period. So we're looking forward to hopefully win some Finish the season uh, on up note, and then next year in the fall we'll be playing 
stadium. So both of you guys were supporters. We, we've had a, a lackadaisical 15-year period there, and nothing to be excited about. You know, when I'm talking to people about Tulane and the stadium, you know, we're not talking about LSU or the Saints. We're talking about Tulane, who had not had success. So we, it's a hard sales pitch, but. Uh, Questions you might have, I'd have to answer. Yes, sir. What happened there? D.H. Home? Well, I didn't know what D.H. Home was in those days. You could have said Maison Blanche, I wouldn't know that either. I, mean, I knew where Bruno's Bar was, but I didn't know where Jamelli's was. So, so I, next time I need a suit, I, I'll definitely uh, remember that. Come on. Anybody? Yes, sir. When you first got to the Giants. Thank you very much. Frank Gifford. You know, people say to me, Bobby, do you play Frank Gifford? And my, my reply is, Frank could be my father. Frank is 80-something years old. And I'm six, I'll be 67 this month. But uh, Frank Gifford's a great friend. I was lucky enough to play with a wonderful organization in New York and became friends with Frank. And... He's, he's still healthy and looks good, and, uh, and my Frank is doing well in his retirement, and uh, um, he is one of the premier giants of all time. Again, another guy from Mississippi, Charlie Connolly, old Miss guy, another great friend who played with the Giants. Yes, sir. Yeah, Bobby, um, I remember as a, a young kid, my dad was always a big Tulane fan and everything. Uh, your rookie season, you came, you were runner-up for rookie of the year in the NFL. That's right. Um, how, how, um, how that happened? That's who won? <laughs> <laughs> well, why did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> hey, I, I was yes. the, There was a trivia question. Yeah. And who was rookie of the year? Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I hate the guy. Where it was, I forgot his name so quickly. But, uh, but I would say that year, who, who could have been? Uh, that's a long time ago. I forgot yesterday. Much less that. But no, I, I was lucky. I, the guys are too young to remember me, and the guys are too old to remember what happened. But uh, I, I played quarterback at Tulane. Uh, I was a very and I was, I was an awful person. I couldn't. I was left-handed, and all the receivers today, now they're 40 years old, say, Duhon, you were the worst passer. You know, I say, yeah, you're right. You know, what else? Are you, what's your problem? But I was a running kind of an option running back, and thanks to guys like Dan Dembinski, I was successful with the option. We did. safety from Detroit, uh, Bruce Maher, so the coach came out. He said, Bobby, you know, play running back. I said, Coach, I never played running back in, in college. I played quarterback from the quarterback position, but I played halfback in high school in Abbeville. He said, we'll teach you how to play running back. What, what that means in the pros, they teach you how to get in the stands, how to come out of the stands, how to get inside out, uh, rock your shoulders what to read, so things like that I'd never learned before. Thank God I went to Tulane, and I was a quick learner. I, I, had, a very, I had a very, very good first year, and uh, so uh, I was also on special teams. I, I ran back a couple of punts and stuff, so that, that, that probably helped. But I was an all-around player. Uh, if you remember the, the old guy, remember the guy named Joe Morrison played with the Giants? He was kind of like my idol. He was, a, he was about eight years ahead of me. But he, he was a quarterback at college, went to uh, Cincinnati, and he was just an athlete. He played defense, he played tight end, he played fullback, he played running back, played wide receiver. He could do all these things. And so Joe was ahead of me, but I saw what he could do and what his value to the team was. And that's why I stayed there for five years. I was average at best, but I, I could play positions. And one thing that Ricky will tell you, and I'll tell you, in the pros, the reason you stay in the pros, you don't make mistakes. You make a mistake, albeit a fumble, 
You drop a pass coming to you, they don't need you. You're gone. You, you see these kids in the Giants running backs. You probably don't follow them the way I do, but the kids that played in the first game, rookies, dropped passes, fumbled, they won't play. They brought in the other guy, Brendan Jacob. So you don't make a mistake in the pros, you play. If you're consistent, the coaches have enough to worry about without dummies making mistakes. So uh, professional football is exciting. I never thought I would get there. I never thought I'd get to Tulane. I never thought I'd uh, play in college. I, I've been very lucky all my life. I've got some great friends that came out tonight. They didn't know I had. I've been lucky. Uh, but I am, uh, yes, sir. You're a good, you, that's a great story. Um, when Jim Pittman came here from Texas, a wonderful coach, now, a lot of guys don't know this. I came to Tulane to play baseball. I was recruited, offered scholarships to a lot of different places, including LSU. And uh, I wanted to play baseball. So Coach O'Boyle at the time said, you can play baseball. And in those days, you had a freshman team in football and baseball and other sports. Freshman team, and then you had the varsity. And LSU had red shirts. Well, most teams had red shirts, but Tulane didn't. We didn't have enough players. But when I, when I signed, uh, LSU said, I said to LSU, I want to play baseball, and I'll consider LSU if you let me play baseball. And they said, no, you got to, you got to letter your first year, and then you can play baseball. Now think of that. You're on the freshman team, you're on the redshirt team, and in those days the LSU was good. So I might not play baseball until my junior year. That wasn't going to work for me. So I went to Tulane, Coach Ball said, you can play baseball your first year. So what happened was Coach Ball got fired. So he goes, he goes away. Coach Pittman comes in from Texas, and he didn't know about this arrangement we had with Tulane. So now it's spring, it's spring, spring training's coming up. His first year there, Jim Pittman's first year there, and I wanted to, I'm going out for baseball. He said, whoa, 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 you're on a football scholarship. I said, Coach, you're right. But I said, in, in my, on my behalf, I am here to play football and baseball, and I really want to play baseball. So we worked out a deal. Basically, I'd go to baseball practice, and I'd come back after practice in my baseball uniform and practice with the football team during the spring training. So uh, he was nice enough to let me uh, play, and I, I love baseball. I still do. I'm a big Yankee fan, and um, uh, that's a, you're an old-timer to remember that. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's much smaller. It's much smaller. Mm. I was a pitcher and a first baseman. You're right. I, mm. I, I, did, I did have fun. Yes, sir. As a running quarterback, your thoughts on the sudden popularity of the read option in both college and the NFL? Well, it's not, well, Ricky will tell you this. RG3 has got to stop running. I mean, he's not. He's terrific. Manziel's a quarterback in college that's got to stop running. He wants to play pro ball. Those guys are 6'5". They're so much bigger. They're bigger than Ricky, and Ricky's big. They're all 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and they can outrun the quarterbacks, I'm telling you. So they want it. That's easy meat for them. So the, if they want to survive the NFL, you got to change your attitude. you got to say, I'm a passer, I'm, I'm inside the tackles, I'm staying here unless I have to run. Uh, the first, first reaction can't be to run, it's got to be to pass. And get rid of the pass. And if you start to scramble and you see this big lunger coming at you, you know, you're not that good to, to take them on. So my reaction is they're not going to last long. If they want to try running in the NFL, they're not going to last long. Uh, it's just, that's a, the players today are so big, so big. I mean, uh, Dan Dubinsky played with me at Tulane. Terrific terrific lineman. He came to Chicago. He was the biggest white guy I'd ever seen when I got to Tulane. He was 6'4", 240. Am I right, Dan? 240. We didn't have anybody who was 240. Now they're 6'7", 6'8", 340. Now, I'm, my, my mother fed us well. Why are these kids 6'6", 6'7", 6'8"? I don't understand that. I mean, they're not eating better than we did. They're not, they're not taking medication. They're, they're taking boost. They're not, the boost doesn't make you four inches taller. So I don't understand the, the growth spurt on these kids. But they're so much bigger. That's just a line I'm talking about. The backs are, look at Brandon Jacobs, 6'4", 260, and he's pretty good. He's not as fast as you like to be, but he's pretty good. Uh, so I think the uh, players today, it's a different game. And so the quarterback to try to take them on is a mistake. It's going to be a short career for you. That's the reality of it all. Thank you very much for having me. Hope you enjoy it.